Hi everybody, it's Father Red Wade calling, not calling, doing another video. It's uh, September uh, 26, about 10 of, uh, 10 of 1. Uh, it's been an interesting week. It's the 26th Sunday of the year, according to Catholic uh, liturgical practices for our masses and what have you. It's been an interesting week. Uh, John Boehner, the Speaker of the House, has resigned and it's causing all kinds of uh, tumult in the Congress and what's going to happen politically in decision making and what have you. And of course, the Holy Father's been here all week, hasn't he? Coming in to New York, uh, into Philadelphia yesterday and today, speaking to the people, visiting the homeless, having lunch and meals with the, with the homeless, reaching out to the poor and giving some talks and what have you. And I've been utterly amazed at uh, some of the responses that have come forth. I thought his, uh, his, his homily, or not homily, but talk at the Congress was brilliant. It caused all kinds of concern. What's he saying? The left uh, Republicans and Democrats, each wanting to jump behind specific issues to say, well, the Holy Father supports this and the Holy Father supports that. And of course, uh, so he had the religious left and the political and religious left uh, each looking for a particular issue to support their agenda. And then, of course, on the right, you had the political right, the uh, Democrats, Republicans, and also the religious zealots in the uh, Catholic and Christian churches wanting a particular thing, each looking for something to support particular issues. And uh, some of the attacks upon him, even from the religious priests and Catholics and Christians, have been vicious, uh, calling him the false pope, quoting uh, the supposed seer, uh, Maria of Divine Mercy. And I've been on some of their websites looking at some of this, and I see nothing but some toxicity, uh, quoting her as if what everything she says is gospel truth, and we, 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 the church hasn't spoken on it. In fact, some bishops have gone against it. I personally don't subscribe to that. If uh, the world was to end today, uh, I would go to one of my priests, go to confession, try to stay in the state of grace. I'm not going to sit there and uh, is some of all, you know, when I look at some of the seers and the prophecies coming out, I look to the ones that have been accepted, Fatima, and Lourdes, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss that. But the ones that aren't, I'm very, very, very cautious. And I think all Catholics and Christians should be. I, but I don't want to get into that. I don't want to resurrect uh any more of that stuff coming from either side. But what really struck me was the Holy Father himself and his issues on, un on unity, which some support and some don't support. And I'm saying, where do you go with this? And I'm trying to picture Jesus with a Sermon on the Mount. And after he's done, blessed are you, blessed are you, blessed are you. And some of the talks that he's given, sitting down and inviting ABC, CBS, NBC, the religious right, the religious left, the political right, into this and have a discussion. You know, like, well, what do you think, boys? What do you think about what I just said? And based on what they think and what they say, and according to the percentile, maybe they'll accept him. Well, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus didn't do that. And so I look at, at, at the Holy Father and going in and not giving anybody a chance to use and politicize what he said. I thought it was brilliant. It was a brilliant strategy. Now, I know there's going to be some that disagree with me. That's okay. You can disagree with me. But I want to share something very, very quickly with you. I know this won't solve the issue. But anyway, this is a cross. And I have, I have this hanging on my wall behind me. You know, by the way, when you look at my room, I'm not in a chapel. So I don't want people saying, well, gee, you're not in a church. I'm in my bedroom. You know, and over there are my clothes and my bed's to the left, my, my printer's to the left, my computer's in front of me. And um, so anyway, this cross, one time I came in, I, I know I told this story before, but bear with me, bear with me. I came into my room one day and I lied in bed and this room was up, uh, was on the wall. And I looked at the cross for some odd reason, I'm just staring at it. And I closed my eyes, I was playing some music and praying. And I think I, I told you this story before, but bear again, bear with me. So as I, as I was closing my eyes in prayer, I heard a thud. I heard a thud, and I, 
I closed my eyes and I, I, I'm not a visionary, but I saw the cross and it was like this. And on both sides of the cross was like, there was a, it was between a chasm. And on one side, people were screaming and yelling, pointing their fingers. And on the other side of the cross, on the other side of the chasm, were people on that side going, rah, 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 and all yelling and screaming. And then all of a sudden, as I'm looking at the cross, I noticed that there was a corpus on the cross and that the corpus got up. Now, this is in my heart. I am not wasn't talking to Jesus. I just was a vision, an inner, an inner sense. And then Jesus got up and he looked to the left and then he looked to the right. And he goes like this. And people were like, as I said before, I know I did this before. Were like looking. They went first of all. They went down and they looked down at the depth and they looked at the cross. And Jesus goes back and forth, left and right, telling them to come, 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 come to the cross. And uh, some people were playing their options. You know, yeah, I probably maybe I would have too. Who knows what I would have done? You know, I'm just looking at this. And it stopped there. And what really struck me was the way the, what I walked away from was an alternative. You've got the secular media, you've got the state, whether it's the United States government, the United Nations, NASA, whatever, not NASA, that's a space agency, sorry about that. Uh, and then you've got Christian denominations, Protestants, Baptists, Methodists, Pentecostals, uh, Catholics, uh, conservatives, liberals, uh, all yelling at one another. And what, and what was coming to my mind was, it's not your way, the liberals, whether you be politicians or Christians, it's not your way. It really is not your way. And then he looks over to the radical conservatives, Catholics, Christians, uh, and look, and says, it's not your way either. It's not your way. This is what I'm saying. It's my way. It's my way. And he's pointing to himself and not using religion. Not that religion is not important. It is important. It is important. Our teachings of our church, I subscribe to them. Obviously, I'm a Catholic priest. But I don't, I'm not trying to bring people into the Catholic Church. I try to bring them to Jesus. First of all, that's the primary call of the gospel, is the kingdom. Jesus came to preach the kingdom. The kingdom of God is now at hand. He didn't tell people at all to go back to the synagogue. Should they? Of course they should. But he didn't say that. He says, come to me. Come to me. And you see, I, this is what I see the Holy Father doing. John Paul did it. Benedict XVI did it. The centrality of Jesus. The church will never make sense. Rules and laws will never make sense. Does that mean they're not important? No, of course they're important. They've been put in place. By two, especially within the Catholic Church and Christian Church for 2,000 years. But it's the person of Jesus. He fed the poor. He healed the wounded. And because of him, they were attracted to the church, to the kingdom. So what I want to leave you with today, and let me see how much time I have here, is the kingdom. The purpose, among other things, of the ring of fire is the kingdom of God. The first words out of the mouth of Jesus were, the kingdom of God is now at hand. The kingdom. And the kingdom, first of all, and we say to our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Well, where do we want it to come? In us. In us. That we have to have kingdom minds and kingdom hearts. That you, you Catholics out there, you liberals, you conservatives, 
you Republicans, you Democrats, you've got to be converted. You've got to be converted. It's not your political plank. It's the gospel. It's the gospel of Jesus. And so that's what I see Francis doing, among other things. And I, as I said before, I want to end this because I thought what he did was brilliant. A plan of nobody's going to walk away and say, well, he's for us, he's for us, he's for us. As I said before, if you want to know the way he thinks, don't go to the don't go to ABC, ABC, CBS, NBC, and even Fox News. I'm really watching Fox News very closely, very very close because I think they're on the precipice also. Uh, with that, is is the kingdom to bring people into Jesus, and if we can bring people to Jesus, the person of Jesus, the Messiah, repentance of sin, being baptized, uh, going to the cross knowing that his, the Father's love and then being filled with the Holy Spirit, we can change the world. We can change the world. And so, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this day and this opportunity. I thank you for, uh, for Pope Francis coming to visit us and spending time with us. Watch over him, protect him, guide him, Lord. Uh, and also, I pray for the United States government, especially the Congress, I pray. For the opponents of God, I pray for those who are slaughtering children in Planned Parenthood. I pray for the Congress, the Democratic Party, especially, and there are Republicans also, who refuse to defund. Therefore, they become complicit in the crime of what's happening. Uh, I pray for the renewal and restoration of the principles of the Democratic Party and the Republican Party that you raise up godly men and godly women in this political realm that stand for the kingdom, for righteousness and justice, and not from left-wing, any kind of left-wing Marxist, secularistic approach to governing people. I pray also for the freedom of people being given the opportunity for freedom expression of their faith and the religion. Bless this nation, Lord, get us back to the Constitution and protect this nation against those who are out to destroy it by secular means. May the blessings of Almighty God be upon each of you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And as always, I love you all. God bless you. I'm going to keep on praying for you. Keep on praying for me. Take care.